Well, hey everyone, it's Scott with NewPortraitBiz.com, and what I want to do today in this short lesson is show you how to create your own cover-up layer. Now, some of you may be saying, what's a cover-up layer? It's basically this, right? We're covering up a portion of the image, so this way here it can look like the subject is actually inside of the prop that we're using here. Now, we use this a lot into our digital creations, and uh, it just makes it so much easier to be able to drop a subject in there and then just turn on your layer, right? Now, it's also a good thing to point out here is that you know when you're putting a subject inside of a digital uh, prop of any kind, you really want to scale it so it looks realistic, right? That's what we want to do. Well, a great way to do this is to just take your image. In this case, you know he was sitting on the floor. So we're able to put him in there like he's sitting on the bottom of this play truck, right? Of this toy. And we're able to see where he would really, in reality, be sitting. So we put him there, then we turn that on, and we know that that's where it is. Now, if we didn't do that, he could be up here. It doesn't look as realistic because then it would look like he's got a huge amount down here that, uh, you know, either he's sitting on something, which he could be, but it doesn't look as realistic as being down in. Right now, if we went down too far, and it might not look right because then where that where's the rest of his body? It's hanging out the, the bottom, right? Well, you could get rid of that, but you get what I mean. So in this case, I just want to show you how to create your own cover-up layer, but I just wanted to show you why they're important and how you can use them to your advantage. And in this case, we can actually see where they'd be sitting and then just instantly cover them up. All right, so with that being said, let me go ahead and uh, I'm going to delete that, and I'm going to make sure that uh, he is uh, not visible and we'll turn off my vignette as well. All right, so let's get to work. The first thing that I do is I grab the pen tool. Now you can use any tool that you want that can cut something out. Uh, you could you know, go up here if you're in CS5, you can go into the quick selection tool and you can you know, go, th well, let me make sure that I'm on the, uh, the actual truck. You can go on here and you, know, you can go through and kind of do a rough, you know, a rough cutout that way, but you can see how it wants to run, right? It wants to run. So we don't want to use that. We don't want to use that method. So what I'm going to do, like I said, is just use the pen tool. I love the pen tool. I've been using it since CS, not even CS, I'm sorry, since Photoshop 6, uh, which is going back a few years. All right, so I just want to get really close here, and I'm just going to go ahead and start making my, uh, you know, my points here. And all you do is just and I like to tell people to really just, before you do anything, just click something, like click here, and then once you make another click, let's say, see how it reacts. See how I'm, I'm just moving that thing now? I'm grabbing this, and it's, it's, you know, it's giving it a different shape. If I pull more, it makes it go more out that way. If I go you know, less, it gives it a more gradual. So you can just, I'm just holding down my mouse and pulling on these, so you can kind of see that it's, it's just twisting it, right? So with that being said, you want to just see and get a feel of how it works, all right? So now what I want to do is I want to get rid of that because if I just go over here now, let's say I want to go now back to here, it's going to see how it kind of cut into there. Well, maybe I don't want that to go there, right? So what I want to do is I want to delete this point, these little pull bars, if you will, and I want to just make it so I can just go with another straight line. And to do that, you just hold down the Option or the Alt key, and then that gets rid of it. All right, so then I would go over here, let's say, and then uh, maybe here, and then here, and then I'm going to come in here, and you can see I just did a completely a, a straight line. Now, you don't always want to use straight lines, you know, because then it's going to make it look cut out. So in this case, you can see, I'm going to zoom way in on this one, you can see here that we have some round uh, corner here. We have a round corner. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click somewhere in here, and I'm going to start bringing that out until I think I've got it right. Then I'm gonna Option or Alt and then click. And then that goes away. Now I can do another straight line. And then from here, I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna bend that. Same idea, Option or Alt, and bring it down to there. And then now I can go back to my straight lines. And like I mentioned in other videos, you wanna make sure that you're on the actual part of the wood or whatever you're trying to cut out. If it's skin, you wanna be on that so that way there, uh, you can make sure that you're getting all of that, okay? So here, and like see how this has got irregularities to it? You want to definitely make sure that you, you keep them in there because if you don't, it's just going to look like a big, long, straight line. It's not going to look realistic. So I, I go all over the place. 
You know, I make sure that I make them rounded, I make them sharp, wherever I can to make it look more natural, I'll do that. Same thing, I'm gonna bend that around. Option Alt here, same thing. And I'm just gonna work that around. See, you just keep working it. And I can keep flying right around here. Now what, I, some of you may be saying, well Scott, how are you dragging this around so, so fast? I'm holding down the space bar and then I'm just clicking. Then I let go of the space bar, then I can come back in here, start clicking again. Now in this case, I can use that bend because I know I'm going in that direction. See, I don't have to, to delete that portion or get rid of one of these handles. I can just go ahead and, and click like that and then bring it back down and then click here and then I'm gonna come back out. So again, it, the pen tool is a very useful tool but it's one that you have to definitely get used to. I say start using it, get used to it, it's so handy. Okay, just keep in here and here. And over here now, I don't, now here, the, here's the, the thing about a cutout. You don't have to be perfect anymore because you're not going to see that. This is going to lie directly over the original. So now I can just fly along here. I don't have to worry about keeping this all perfect because you're not going to even know that I'm cutting it. I'm just making it so it's separate. So this way here, it can over, overlay um, the subject. Up here, where it's going to be seen, that's where you want to be more critical. And you're going to see, I'm going to also have to knock this out too because if not, you're going to see that. All right, and I'll show you what I mean. So now we're on the truck. Let me just zoom out. You can barely see the, my line, but you'll see the uh, marching ants here in a minute. I go to paths. Okay, if you don't see paths, you're going to want to go to window and then go find paths, and then it will come up into the your uh, your little layers palette here. And click on that, and then go over here to this little drop down, and then do make selection. I'm going to go 0 0.5. Uh, leave it. Everything else checked the way it is. New selection. Select OK and then go to layer, and then uh, new, and then copy, not cut, copy. And you can see now, let me turn all this stuff off, we've got a copy there. Look at if I just leave it like that, we've got a copy. And it goes right over top of the original. See, you don't even know it's, I'm doing it now, I'm turning it on and off and you don't even see it. Now let me turn the baby back on, okay? And now remember with the cover up layer, you gotta make sure it's over top of the baby or the subject. So now you can see. Now let me just show you something. Let me zoom in here. Now see how you don't see the arm through here anymore? Let me pull it in. You don't see the arm because I didn't cut this portion out. Okay? So we want to make sure that we do that because that will be, you'll see that in the image and then people will not look at it as being that realistic and that'll kind of give away the secret. Right? So go ahead in here and just do the same thing. Make sure that you're on the layer of the cover up layer and then just start cutting that part, that part out now. And again, make sure that you get all of this. So I would go on top of this little metal clip uh, more so than I would try to stay away from it. And that'll just make sure that you get it all. And then the same thing, make, make sure you connect everything and then go to paths and then make selection and then just delete, okay? And then deselect, select, deselect. See, now I can see the arm through it. That looks more realistic. Okay, and same thing over here. You're not going to see it as much because it's seeing through to the original. But what if you did have another baby that was back further, uh, or maybe two kids, or, you know, whatever? You want to make sure that you do it all. So this way here, you don't leave any of that stuff behind. Okay, and then from there, paths, make selection, delete, and then deselect, and that's it. That's how you create a cover-up layer. So this way here, you can make your job a lot easier when uh, you know using digital backgrounds and digital props. And in, in our case, we do these for all of our digital props. This makes it so much easier uh, for, oh, you know what? I missed this one right here. Well, you get the idea. I'm not going to do that one too. I was just getting ready to wrap this up. But basically, that's what you would do. Cut that one out the same way that you did these two, and you'd be all set. This is something you can do if you're going to try to create your own props uh, and use them. It's very handy and very helpful. Uh, if you want to check out our digital backgrounds and digital props, you can head over to newportraitbiz.com forward slash club, or you can just go to digitalportraitbackgrounds.com. It'll take you to the same place. And once again, I'm Scott with newportraitbiz.com. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I definitely enjoyed making it for you. If you have any questions, let me know. You can head over to newportraitbiz.com for that. And uh, I'll talk to you later.